Today we have Executive Vice President and National Sales Manager Kevin DeSano of Index IQ, best known for its ETFs that try to replicate hedge fund strategies. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So we're going to talk about ETFs as our main focus. We've seen big outflows in recent years. Actually, we've had recent figures come out. $15 billion in ETFs have exited in August, with $690 million coming from gold alone. With this large exodus, do you see money coming back into ETFs, particularly in the gold space? Well, uh, first part of your question is back into the ETF space in general. I mean, uh, we've actually seen uh, positive net flows this year into a number of our ETF strategies. The one area that you mentioned in particular, which is the, the commodity areas, in particular the precious metals area, that has been under pressure. The performance year to date for gold, um, particularly GLD, has not been very good. In fact, just uh, through yesterday, it was down about 22% year to date. And for the miners themselves, um, using GDX, for example, as a proxy, that's down almost 44% year to date. So uh, clearly that performance scares a lot of investors out of these strategies, which may actually present some interesting buying opportunities for savvy investors out there. Buying opportunities right now. Back in April, Index IQ said when gold plunged, it looked like it could be a great buying opportunity in the commodities. Uh, do you still agree with that? Did we reach a bottom? Yeah, I think I think the I think a lot of the selling pressure and a lot of the the, the supply demand imbalances, the the inflation issues are all sort of being factored in or have been factored in over the last twelve plus months, um, in our in our global resources uh, ETFs, whether it's uh, GRES, which is our broad global resources strategy, or whether it's our I oil strategy, um, or crop is the ticker for our agribusiness strategy. Um, we've actually seen um, you know performance pressure under pressure in some of those strategies, but the relative performance performance in particular for our broad global resources portfolio has actually started to improve. And uh, that strategy weights its underlying sectors based on valuation and momentum. And we've actually seen the precious metal sector um, increasing in weighting over the last four or five months after a lot of that selling pressure, which was severe in the first part of the year, has, has sort of uh, died off a little bit. Um, obviously, the oil space with, with everything that went on in the Middle East here over the last several months has been a very hot area. So, you know, you kind of got to pick and choose which area you want to play in the commodity space right now, but it, but there are opportunities, I think, for, for investors looking to reallocate to that space. All right. Uh, from your standpoint, which ETF right now has the best potential and why? In in our lineup, um, I think the 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 ones with the well the one with the most potential in terms of capital appreciation um, over the next three to five years is probably our global resources ETF. Just because uh, the ticker there is GRES, that strategy has been under pressure. Um, it, relative performance has actually been very good relative to the broad commodity ETFs that most investors use. Uh, people just don't know as much about it. Um, but the methodology behind that strategy is really a buy low, sell high, monthly reallocation based simply on valuation and momentum across eight resource and commodity sectors. So it's very broad, very diversified, and it gives investors a very nice core way to play that space. Another area that we've seen very, very solid interest in this year is as people have become very concerned about interest rates and rising interest rates, um, our hedge fund strategies um, in ETF format, in particular QMN, which is our market neutral ETF, and QAI are great alternatives for investors looking for um, uh, bond uh, substitutes in their portfolios. The volatility profile of both of those ETFs, QAI and QMN, lend itself to be a very interesting fixed income alternatives for for people concerned about rising interest rates. In fact, um, both of those are right around 500 uh, basis points or five percentage points ahead of the aggregate bond index on a year-to-date basis. So they're already starting to pay dividends for investors looking for an alternative to bonds. And to wrap up, we can't shake the debt ceiling debate and it's looming again in about a month. So how could investors protect themselves using ETFs, for instance? Well, I mean, that's a that's a really tricky question. I mean, there's certainly lots of different ways that this whole debate can can go. And we've we've saw we've seen back in 2011, um, you know, some of the problems with the uh, with with uh, the debt downgrade the last time the, the the issue surfaced. So there's it's it's really a tough call. I think the best way for investors to play the um, the the coming uh, political issues is to really maintain a diversified stance, look for opportunities in areas that will um, you know benefit in a 
rising interest rate environment, um, because clearly interest rates are going to be rising over the next three to five years. If the Fed reduces its bond purchasing, um, you get some of the, the, the fiscal issues in order. Interest rates are bound to rise as inflation picks up. So I think the commodities area is an interesting one. And I think um, our hedge strategies are interesting because both of those uh, should do better in an inflationary or rising interest rate type environment. So uh, lots of opportunities for investors, but always diversification is the best because, you know, my crystal ball broke a few uh, a few years back and it's very hard to predict what's going to happen in the future. But I think if investors stay diversified, they'll do well. Well, great thoughts from Kevin DeSano. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to send them to newsfeedback at kiko.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at Alex underscore Letourneau. Cheers. <laughs>